Let's talk for a minute now about compound units. What do I mean by compound units? A compound unit is just any unit that's made up of other units multiplied or divided together. So for example, miles per hour, feet per second, but also square inches or foot pounds. All right, square inches is inches times inches, foot pounds is feet times pounds. This is a, a measure of uh, energy in physics. We're probably not going to see very much of that. But these are all examples of compound units. When we're converting between compound units, we can use exactly the same conversion factor scheme, but we have to think about it a little bit more carefully. Let's see an example. Suppose that you're stuck in traffic and your friend is in the car with you. The traffic is moving really slowly. According to your speedometer, you're going 10 miles per hour. Your friend in the car with you is a runner, and your friend claims that he runs at a speed of 20 feet per second. And he claims that he would get there faster if he just got out of the car and ran the rest of the way. So here's the question. Is your friend right? In order to compare your speeds, they need to be in the same units. Miles per hour is different than feet per second. So in order to be able to compare them, you need to convert one speed to the other unit. And now we get to make a choice, but the choice I'm going to make is to convert 20 feet per second into miles per hour. We could have chosen to go the other way, to convert 10 miles per hour into feet per second. And our final answer would be the same yes or no. So, here's how we need to think about this. 20 feet per second means 20 feet for every one second. And we want to use conversion factors to eventually get some number of miles over some number of hours. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to do the feet to miles first because I know how many feet in a mile, or I can easily find that. So I have feet in the numerator that I want to get rid of. And I have miles in the numerator that I want to end up with. OK, so that's good. But now, looking carefully, I want to get rid of seconds in the denominator. To, get, to cancel out seconds in the denominator, I need seconds in the numerator. Ideally, I'd like to be able to put in hours in the denominator. And after a little bit of looking around, I find one mile is 5,280 feet, and one hour is 3,600 seconds. So I can do feet to miles as a one-step conversion. 5,280 feet to one mile. And I can do seconds in the denominator to hours in the denominator as a one-step conversion. Let's make sure that worked. My feet cancel out. My seconds cancel out. I'm left with just miles in the numerator, just hours in the denominator. That worked. 
I had to multiply by two conversion factors to make it work. But this isn't really a two-step conversion because I could convert miles directly and hours directly. The weirdest thing was that in order to convert from seconds to hours, seconds ended up in the numerator because I wanted to cancel out a seconds in the denominator. Okay, let's do the arithmetic now. 20 times 3,600 is 72,000. A bunch of ones times 5,280 is 5,280. And then let's put that into the calculator. 72,000 divided by 5,280 is 13.63 repeating miles per hour. I can leave that as a decimal. I could make that a fraction if I wanted. Right? 13 and math fraction part answer make it a fraction. 13 and 7 elevenths miles per hour. That's also fine. So what, what were we trying to figure out again? Let's look back at the story. We're stuck in traffic and our friend is bragging that running at 20 feet per second he can run faster than the car is going. Well if he really runs at 20 feet per second that's 13 and 7 elevenths miles per hour. That's faster than 10 miles an hour. If he really runs at 20 feet per second, then yes, he's right. Let's see another example of converting with these compound units. Suppose that you have a poster with an area of 216 square inches. You go to have your poster printed and the shop tells you that they don't charge by the square inch, they charge by the square foot. So you need to figure out how many square feet is your poster. Well, there are two ways we could approach this. We could think about this in terms of conversion factors, or we could think about this in terms of what a square foot actually is. Let's do this in terms of conversion factors first, and then I'll show you why this works out this way. So, we have 216 inches times inches over 1. And our goal is to get something in feet times feet over something with no units. We know our relationship between inches and feet, but if we multiply by that conversion factor, only one of the inches is going to cancel out, and we're only going to get one of the feet. So we need to do it twice. Now another inches cancels out, and we'll have feet times feet in the numerator, just like we wanted. Okay, this looks like it's going to work. Let's fill in the numbers. One foot is 12 inches. One foot is 12 inches. Work out the multiplication in the numerator. We have 216 square feet. In the denominator, we have just the number 144. Doing that division, we'll have 216 divided by 144. That's 1.5 square feet. Okay, why the heck did that happen? Right, we know that one foot is 12 inches. 
How did we get from that to, it looks like, one square foot is 144 square inches. Well, remember what a square foot is. A square foot is a square one foot on a side. But if it's one foot on a side, one foot is 12 inches. 12 inches times 12 inches is 144 square inches. These squares are the same size. Why is one square foot the same as 144 square inches? Because of what we mean when we talk about a square foot. Do you have to memorize that? Well, no, no you don't. Because the conversion factors will show you how to make that conversion.